Two ways of investing, they're supposed to get you essentially the same thing, honestly. They're supposed to get you the same results. So we're talking about a more traditional way of doing this. So the three fund portfolio, nice and easy, nothing crazy. Then we're talking about robo-advisors, which when you hear it, you're thinking, oh my gosh, algorithms and my investments. And I mean, this kind of sounds a little bit scary, but at the same time, maybe it might be a great way to go because technology's come so far lately. So we're gonna try to figure out what is the best way to go ahead and do this. Is a three fund portfolio gonna be better for you? Is a robo advisor gonna be better for you? Are there other ways of doing this? How should we look at this? So the first thing let's try to do is let's describe what a three fund portfolio is first. So you kind of are on the same page here. So we all know the reason people love three fund portfolios is honestly it's simplicity. And at the same time, it's simple, it's simplicity, but it's mixed with a low cost. So it's the best of both worlds. It's easy to manage, it's easy to understand, right? and they don't cost a lot. So what you do is you find three funds. I'm using ETFs in this, but you can also use index funds. Uh, I'm using Vanguard, but you could use Vanguard index funds, Vanguard ETFs. You can use different fund companies if you would like, but I'm just, this is like the most popular way of doing it. So VTI is the total stock market. And so what I'm doing is there's different ways to mix your portfolio. And this is where it does get a little bit complicated for some people, which might be the thing that the robo advisor would do for you okay, how much risk do you want to take? Do you want to be like 80% in stocks, which is what I'm showing you here, and 20% in bonds, which have or should have less risk than stocks? I mean, right now, crazy year right now, crazy year right now, but generally, historically, bonds are not as risky as stocks. So what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to put 80% in stocks, 20% in bonds, and then part these two here, the VTI and the VXUS, these are both stock funds. So you have stocks that are in the United States, and you have stocks outside the United States. And that's why this is great because it gives you diversification across all different types of stocks. So you get US domestic, you get international. Um, and that's kind of one of the great things about this. And then of course you get bonds. So because you get bonds, it's called like you have asset allocation, right? You have different asset classes. You have stocks and you have bonds, right? And so that's what's nice about this. And then of course we have a low expense ratio. So the expense ratio for VTI is 0.03%, it's dirt cheap. VXUS, 0.07%, it's also very cheap. BND is 0.03%, very cheap, right? So the total you're gonna pay with a three fund portfolio, if you did these allocations, 65% into the total stock market, 15% into the international, 20% into the um, bond fund, well, you're gonna only pay 0.036% for this allocation. That is it. So you're not going to pay anything else. You're going to pay 0.036% and you're good. Off to the races, you invest this thing, you do your thing. Now, okay. The other part is, do you want to maybe not be as involved with this, right? Because you do have to put money into it and you do have to make sure that these allocations stay similar, right? So at the end of you know a year or two, they're going to be different. So one of these, VTI, might outperform BND. And what's going to happen? You're going to have to figure out a way to make sure that these allocations stay the same if that's you know the way you want to go, which most people do, they rebalance their portfolios. So that's something you don't have to do when you have a robo-advisor, okay? So now let's talk about the robo-advisors. I'm gonna to touch on three different robo-advisors in this, but there's different robo-advisors. You, know, you can pick and choose the ones you want. This isn't a review of which robo-advisor, we're just kind of comparing them, but Betterment is one, Wealthfront is another, and then you have Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios as another one. So. Let's start with Betterment. So in Betterment, uh, better. So these different um, robo advisors, Betterment and Wealthfront, they're really think of them more like financial technology, right? They're gonna help you with certain things like even life goal planning and getting to retirement, right? There's gonna be some financial planning um, components uh, involved and spread throughout these potentially. So let's take a look at what you have here. You can answer some questions with Betterment with Wealthfront. They're gonna tell you how much you should be saving, putting away what goal you might wanna be getting to and things like that. Of course, with a three fund portfolio, you have to do these things yourself, right? So it's not gonna go, you're gonna basically be like, okay, do I need $2 million when I go to retire and how much time is that gonna take? Well, I have to calculate that myself if I am going to be doing it with a three fund portfolio. I go to a robo advisor, throw in my stuff, and I should be theoretically uh, off to the races and it should tell me what should be going on. So there should be something like this where it's saying like, Okay, you're putting money into this, you're putting how much per month, if you put $1,000 per month and you invest it in 30 years, 
then you could potentially get this hypothetical amount and then it's gonna tell you the details and it's gonna be based on your risk tolerance, right? So if you wanna put more money into just stocks or less money into stocks and some bonds instead, well, it's gonna also adjust for you and figure out how to get there. For Betterment specifically, so it starts like this. So it says, okay, you go ahead and you tell a little bit about yourself, you set up the account in minutes, they handle the hard stuff. So from portfolio recommendations, fractional shares, things like that. So um, fractional share investing can be good. So you'll have more money invested so you can get fractions of shares of ETFs um, instead of just having to have all of your money inside these three funds, in the three fund portfolio. It's gonna auto adjust your different holdings. So again, let's say you wanna have that 65% in VTI in the total stock market. Well, Better Mint, Wealthfront, uh, Charles Schwab, Intelligent Portfolios, they're gonna keep that kind of similar uh, allocation. So you don't have to go ahead and find like ways to rebalance and things like that. So this, so this part's probably, I'd say the most important. This is gonna be the one that might be the kicker for a lot of people and it's essentially just, it's about taxes. So when you look at a three fund portfolio, you know that it's like what, 0 0.03 something percent. It's very, it's like nothing, right? So you pay like no money to have your money there. But in this one, while you do pay a fee, and I'll show you in a second, what you get is a taxation kind of benefit, let's say. So this will do tax loss harvesting for you, which you can try to do yourself inside of a three fund portfolio, but it's gonna be kind of hard and you'll end up not having a three fund portfolio. You'll probably need a few different ETFs or index funds to add in there. So kind of defeats the purpose. And then if you want tax coordination, this is things like, let's say you have um, some retirement accounts and you have some brokerage accounts, right? Well, you might want to have certain uh, pieces of your portfolio inside of your brokerage account and then other pieces inside of your tax advantage savings account, your tax advantage investment account. Why is that? Well, because the things that you're, you might be paying more in taxes with annually, well, they could put those inside of the IRAs or the Roth IRAs or whatever it is, and they could actually save you more money in taxes. And so it ends up being a cost that you don't have to pay that you would be paying with a three fund portfolio. And so in my opinion, that ends up being a cost that you should be considering, right? So it's not just the expense ratio. Now we're talking about expense ratio, but then taxes. And so when we add this all up at the end of the day, I mean, it probably does make sense in some instances to have a robo advisor. Here we can see the same thing kind of with Wealthfront, right? So you can go ahead and you can add money in and it's going to manage different accounts. You have emergency funds. It's got a decent APY on your savings account here. Wealthfront has some other interesting things in terms of like uh, saving for college. So if you have uh, children and you want to go ahead and uh, put money into a 529 plan, it's going to be able to incorporate things like this, right? Can three fund portfolio, just three funds. You might have to just decide, well, part, part of my three fund portfolio will go to my child's college tuition. Um, this one's actually going to probably segment it out, right? And it's going to help you kind of plan. Of course, everyone wants to know the potential returns you could have had. So uh, Wealthfront does have this for us. So if we go back to 2013 and you put $10,000 in this account, it would have grown to 17,000, uh, just over 17,000. So time weighted return, 71% annual, average annual return is 5.7%. This actually ends up being someone that is with a risk score of nine. So you're, you have more risk. So if you're less risky, you would probably ended up with, uh, let's say if you had a risk score of seven, for example, well, your growth would have been about 5.06%, so not too much lower. And then if we go down to, let's say you have a risk score of five, you're pretty risk averse. Well, you get 4.66%. So these haven't done you know, crazy in growth, but let's take a look quickly at what a three fund portfolio might've done. What I did here was I back tested a portfolio, a three fund portfolio, and I said, okay, let's say you uh, invested t uh, January, 2013 till September of 2022. What would that have grown to? Okay, well, let's see. You got the same allocations. Remember, 65% in VTI, VXUS 15, and BND 20%. Remember, if you had invested in the risk score of a nine with Wealthfront, you can move this up, you would have had a return of 5.72%. Uh, okay, so that's what it is. Now let's go over here and take a look at the return if you had invested in the three fund portfolio. So the compound annual growth rate is actually 8.27%. So you actually did a lot better having a three fund portfolio than going with Wealthfront. So, I mean, honestly, I don't like that return. Um, for a risk score of a nine, I would 
assume it was going to be higher, honestly. So uh, for whatever reason, it has not done that well. So I'm not sure why. But in terms of performance, so we know that Wealthfront is probably not as good as the three fund portfolio has historically at least uh, been. So, okay, let's take a look at the fees because that's an important part too. So let's go back to Betterment. Betterment's fee here, you can see it's a 0.25% uh, for most customers. And then it's 0.40% if you want the premium plan. And that's going to essentially give you over the phone uh, advice packages. So you can actually talk to uh, advisors and things like that. So you have that if you want to. Um, but so generally speaking, it's going to be 0.25%. And on top of the 0.25%, you're actually going to end up paying, of course, expense ratios on the ETFs or the funds that you end up having in these different um, uh, robo advisors. So you're going to have to factor that into, um, I think it's around, let's say, 0.12%. Uh, and it depends, of course, what type of risk tolerance you have and things like that. So Let's just add uh, another 0.12% uh, and say uh, maybe 0.37% all in to have the ability to have the software, the ability to have the financial planning things going on, them investing for you, getting um, the different taxation, things like tax loss harvesting, and the ability to put uh, different assets that might be better, more tax efficient inside of different uh, types of accounts. Okay, so. Um, those are things that you could potentially get with uh, the Betterment and the Wealthfront. So you're going to pay a little bit more money and you're going to get these different things, these options for you. The other one I wanted to just throw on here just so you have it is that uh, if you're looking at different um, something that you just want that is going to be less expensive and you don't care about financial planning software and things like that. Let's say you just want to have some tax loss harvesting, some rebalancing automatically for you. Then you have Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. This thing actually has no fee. So Betterment Wealthfront, that 0.25% uh, that you pay in the fee. Well, you're not going to get that in the Charles Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. So that's a good thing if you're interested in not paying a fee, but not really um, interested in like a really great um, planning type of uh, tool to help you figure out how much money to save, how much to put towards uh, college and things like that. So um, that's just like, let's say, basic bare bones. Uh, versus these two. So in general, what do I think? Um, I just I still like a three fund portfolio. If I'm just going to be able to do this myself, I think it's performed better. It's less costly. However, I know that there are people who definitely don't want to go and try to figure out how much to save for their child's uh, 529 plan. And I think that this, you know, like Wealthfront, for example, can help you with that. I know there are people who don't want to figure out how to do tax loss harvesting and uh, figure out how to pay less taxes if you have money inside, let's say, a taxable brokerage account. So there's that too, right? So it depends what you do. I, I know how to do these things, and so I maybe I'm biased, so I would be fine with a three-fund portfolio, which I don't have a three-fund portfolio. I have more advanced stuff going on for myself. Um, but in general, if I'm thinking about this for different people, you know what? I can see, depending on your personality, what you want to accomplish, what you're into, uh, either of these can be a potential option for someone. I just hope that all the things I went over at least help you figure out which one is going to be the best one for you. So I hope you like this, and uh, hopefully you did. Got a disclaimer here. Watch another video, please. I got some end screen videos coming up, and see you next time.